Richard. Hi. Welcome back. Great We're to have you back. Again. And uh, Jake, so good to have you here. Thanks for having me. And uh, what are we doing today? Well, Jake is with the Texas Whiskey Festival. He's the founder of the Texas Whiskey Festival, mm -hmm. which is going to be happening in the next month. I thought it'd be nice to have him come in and bring some things that he's been finding impressive for us mm -hmm. to try today. Well, fantastic. We'll find out if y'all are as impressed as I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure I'll be impressed. I'm very easy to impress as far as whiskey goes. But I'm getting a lot more savvy because I'm doing this show with you guys. So thank you. Uh, Texas Whiskey Festival. Tell me about that. When did uh, when did that start? Started it, it, did the first one in 2018. All right. Uh, the Bob Bullock History Museum. All right. Yeah, it was nice. great. Uh, and this will be our seventh year. Seventh year. And how many people go to this festival? Uh, this year we're expecting 900 to 1100. Um, we're still kind of rebuilding since COVID, you yes, know, I was uh, going to say, say, uh, that took a little bit of a downturn, but, uh, we're seeing people come back. We're looking for, we're expecting a good crowd this year. And it'll be over at uh, star Hill ranch. So it's a really wide open space. Yeah. It's an old West town, uh, right outside of bee cave. And Interesting. so it's a wedding venue, but they also do a lot of filming out there. So like the Food Network films out there. They filmed some of the Fear of the Walking Dead out there. Oh, cool. Uh, it's just a really cool venue. It's an old West town. All the buildings were from somewhere in Texas. So they moved them there and yeah. assembled this old West. This like, yeah, the street has got a main street. You got a little festoon lighting coming got in there. It. So the saloon that's on property was the original post office of Bee Cave. And they turned it into a saloon. Yeah. Cool. And the bar that was in the miniseries Lonesome Dove is sitting in there right now. Okay. It's pretty cool. cool. That sounds like it would be a, a, a fun place to... Uh, is it going to be like Western themed? No, it's... Uh, Whiskey's we just, already a little bit Western well, themed all by itself. But really, we like the venue for the ambiance and the atmosphere cool. that it has. It creates a very welcoming and lively atmosphere, and which is what we want for people when they're getting to taste whiskey. Yeah. Uh, but we have dueling pianos as entertainment, uh, cigars, food trucks... A little bit of everything. Yeah, that sounds awesome. That sounds like it's going to be fantastic. I hear that we are starting with a rye today, and so yes. I brought this tea. Have you ever have you done this before? This is called Gongfu Cha. No, I have not. Oh, I'm excited. All right. I'm excited to share it with you. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about it. I'm just going to serve the tea, and you can just enjoy it. You don't need to know anything special about it, but what this is that we're about to drink is what's called a Sheng Puar. Puar is kind of like a regional style, so it would be like saying scotch, mm -hmm. and then Sheng would be the processing style. So if you want to think of it kind of analogous okay. like that. And I'm just going to pass it to you in this little piece of paper. It's a little ball. It's called a dragon ball, the shape of tea. There's lots of different shapes that tea leaves can be pressed into. So you can just take it this little paper, give it a sniff if you want. Shouldn't have too much smell just yet because we haven't opened it up. Mm. But uh, I love rye. I don't know much about rye or what makes rye rye. And I actually would love to know about that if you want to share. Absolutely. But this is the this is the tea when I think about rye because I do like rye. Okay. When I think about it, I'm like, this is the tea. I love this tea. It's a, what's called an ancient tree tea. Okay. So the trees themselves are old. They're about the oldest trees on Nanwa Mountain are estimated to be about 800 years old. Wow. So that's just the individual tree. And so picking tea, and they're not all that old. They're going to be a range. Right. Picking tea just from these old trees gives you what's called gushu cha ancient tree tea. And processing it as Sheng Puar is like this very essential style of processing. It's like you get a good fish, you eat it raw. So this is like, that's what Sheng means. It means raw. It's one okay. of the names for it. And so it's just this very raw. Shengs tend to be a little bit bitter. This one I don't think is bitter in the way I'm going to make it. It's not going to be bitter, but they can be bitter. It's like one of the main flavors. And uh, they just have this really complex, like hard-hitting character that I think is going to go well with the rye. So yeah, very excited to share I this with too. you. This one had almost a hemp-like smell, smell to it. Smell it now that it's warmed up. I Ooh. haven't even rinsed it yet. It's nice. It's just warmed it up, and it's going to have a real nice smell. So, yeah, rye. What's rye? So, rye, I know y'all talked about bourbon and what it means to be bourbon. So kind of those same roles. Did we do that? We did that. Yeah, so we, we did, did that. Yeah, okay. Well, cool. so just make sure. <laughs> <think of> it <laughs> <as a laughs> this is my job to not know about whiskey. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but So you look at your mash bill or your grain recipe, and at least 51% of it has to be rye. Got in the unless grain you're rye. in Canada. Unless you're in Canada, then they don't care what you do. Because actually in, in Canada, it's mostly Western Canada, the, the rye was so synonymous with whiskey that when you went into the bar and you asked for a whiskey, you would ask for a whiskey and 
whatever you wanted to mix it with it. So you're asking for a rye whiskey as a matter of course, mm. and it just became synonymous with the yeah. term whiskey in Canada. So Canada. rye just means whiskey there. Yeah. Canada, it, it yeah, they don't, yeah. these rules guys, are very much, right? They're, right? Yeah, I know, Canadians, people. right? What are you gonna what do? What are you gonna do? I mean, they're nice and all, but- put maple syrup in it too? <laughs> Sometimes they do. Drink uh, it with a bear? The, the most Moose. popular whiskey and most allocated hard to find whiskey right now is Crown Royal Blackberry. It's selling out of blackberry. Blackberry because it has blackberries in it. Blackberry flavor. These guys. I know Canadian. These guys. So, but rye whiskey. So as long as it's at least fifty-one percent rye, the other grains can be whatever you want them to be. New aged and new charred oak, and then the rest of the distillation rules that follow, like bourbon and all of that as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, The only main difference is it has to be at least majority rye. Why rye? Of all the different grains you can use, why does rye get its own special designation? Because you don't see like Barley as like a type of whiskey, or oh, absolutely yeah. you do. And, but then did and we call it barley whiskey? whiskey? Oh, and is that wheat what whiskey? Yeah, it's, it's made of from 100 percent malted oh. barley. Okay, so that one. What about like mm. wheat, for example? We there is a wheat whiskeys. And do I know of any? Have I ever had? Uh, Lone Elm out of Texas is a wheat whiskey. There's does it also... say wheat whiskey on yes, the bottle? Yes, it, it does. does. Okay, I'm wrong. Absolutely. I'm wrong. <laughs> Never mind. So there are categories. I'm the only one I know about. <laughs> there are categories for all of these things. As right. long as if whatever the dominant grain is in there is what the is sure. what they call that style of whiskey. And a lot of times when we're having these conversations, it's very easy just to think of wheat for bread, but there are so many different varieties of re- wheat out there. There's even hybrids of wheat called triticale, which is actually a hybrid of wheat and rye. Yep. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you can call a specific grain, but you have to remember heirloom grains. Yeah, it's the same thing with the corns, heirloom corns. So this is yeah. all going to provide the distillation an opportunity to change and rearrange what it is that they're making. And this is what really, for me, emphasizes a lot of what's happening in craft. Why am I paying a little bit more? Well, we're smaller, we're more boutique, we're going to be able to work with local farmers at a a one-to-one basis, we're going to be able to bring in flavors at the big boys, it's not going to be easy to scale up. Hey, word, because that's just like tea. 100%, 100%, especially like this specific tea. Okay. The guy who makes this Lishu in. This is, it's Gushu Cha, it's ancient tree tea. It's Bama Gushu Cha, which is the name of one particular patch on the mountain, right? Wow. So it's that micro source in the same way when you're talking about craft. You've got these heirloom grains, they're a grain source from one particular part of this island, you know, they've got this particular mm-hmm. taste. You just use this type of peat, whatever, all that kind of thing. The leaves from this are from ancient trees from this particular patch. And they used to, this patch is famous, it's called the Bama Patch. A stream flows down from the top of the mountain, down the mountain, and that stream is the Bama stream, and it doesn't flow all year long. But the, the water, when the stream is flowing, the water in the stream is supposed to be sweet, and they say if you plant white rice in the water of the stream, it grows up red. So it's just this special stream. Wow, well, that's And cool. for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, they've had this, you know, it's just been, they've had this idea of this stream being a special place. So there used to be lots of ancient trees there, and they, they gave some to Chairman Mao when he was going through this region in the 60s or 70s. He was gifted some tea from this region, and it was from these ancient trees because it was known to be special. A lot of those old trees got cut down in the later, you know, in the, like the 80s or 90s or whatever, because people didn't care about ancient tree tea at that particular time due to the economy. You know, mm-hmm. just people, no one could afford to pay people to go climb up these big old trees and pick this tea. It's like much less yield. People weren't trying to pay more for luxury tea. So like, cut the old trees down, plant a bunch more, more Bama tea, you know, Bama tea's famous. Cut the old ones down, get a bunch more yield from that same area of space. Right. So he's, I've always wanted Gushu Bama tea because he makes other tea from the Bama plants and they're just fire, they're really good. Uh, and he's never made it before because usually the tea is pressed into a big cake called a bing, like okay. 357 grams. This is just one little serving. And so he got hold of some and he's using it to make these little dragon balls so that you can buy like a $7 dragon ball instead of like a $400 big old cake. So that's what this is, but it's right along that concept of sourcing, how important sourcing is. For whiskey, you take these things and you make them into the mash and then you distill it. And so you're pulling the essence from them with tea, it's just the crude plant. You know, it'd be like if we're drinking a a bowl full of barley water or rye water. But yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. give it a smell, slurp it. Mm. Yeah. 
and then after you swallow, exhale through your nose. Okay. And it's just getting going. Look, mm -hmm. it's still a ball. Right. It's not leaves yet. I mean, it is leaves, but it's going to be all just a bunch of leaves by the time we're done. Okay. okay. Sweet. Thank you. That's about the tea. So now we want to talk yeah. whiskey, huh? All right. So this first, the rye whiskey is actually part of a collaboration series that I do with different distilleries called Tejas, okay. which is an old Caddo word for friend and ally. It also means Texas in Spanish. And so uh, the idea is that I'm working with friends, the whiskey and the wood are becoming allies, and then we want you to share it with friends. And so all of this is, so all of my projects are usually cast finishing. So this is a rye whiskey from Shire Distilling out of Houston. Okay. And they have not actually released a rye whiskey yet. Mm -hmm. But we uh, came across this rum barrel from what was high rum then, now Island Getaway Rum. And James, the distiller, had been working on this heavy dunder um, rum. And it was this <laughs> little 30-gallon French oak barrel that he put this rum in there and aged it. And when they finally dumped it, there wasn't, they didn't get a whole lot of bottles out of it. But our friend Emma Kahn was working there at the time, and she's like, hey, chick, I got this barrel. Do you want it? I was like, oh, absolutely. Yes, I do. <laughs> so I called the uh, father-son team over at Shire. I was like, hey, I got this barrel. Can we do, like, I want to do something with y'all with it. And they're like, all right. So he's like, well, we haven't released our rye, but do you want to try the rye? And I was like, well, absolutely. So we popped, so we took some samples from a few barrels and was like, oh, yeah, okay. So we ended up taking some from two different barrels, blending it into this rum barrel. And it is now available at the tasting room. At we just Shire released in at Shire. No, it's, they're now in Houston, right down the road from Giant Texas Distilling. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. I'm uh, in Houston. Check them out next time I go home. That's that funny because uh, something we're going to do later is uh, has two different locations that make things a little confusing. Well, too. now they've shut down the Brookshire location. They're just mm. in the one location. They completely moved their distillery. Wow. Got it. So the tasting room should be opening up very soon. So to be clear, this is two ryes that have never been released before. That, that we were blended. already in barrels. That we blended, yep. And what kind of barrels were they in before? Uh, just regular white oak American barrels. Regular white oak barrels, blended two barrels and put it in two, two different barrels and put it in a third barrel, which is a dundery rum barrel. Yes, thirty gallon which French. Dunder is the stuff that's not the alcohol in rum, right? It's, it's the, the, like it's the, the leftover. Stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. the leftovers, so, which makes it taste funky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can smell that on there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of tropical oh, notes. Nice. In it. Yeah. Oh, I can breathe out both nostrils now. There you go. Yeah. Now, I will tell you, we did bottle this at cast proof. strength, so it's 122 yeah. proof. I love cast. We love cast strength on this show. <laughs> but Thank there you. are some, so many little smells in there. Oh, I know. It's, 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 there's like fruit and wine right. and honey yes. and chocolate and tobacco and like so many things going there's, on. Yes. And the longer you set with it, you're going to pull out different notes. It's really enjoyable to set with and just kind of let it do its thing. So the reason I'm like, why rye is because obviously in the Don McLean song, American Pie, he says whiskey and rye. I remember being a kid and hearing that. I'm like, I know what whiskey is. What the hell rye are they drinking? I thought rye was a grain. And so, so we were talking about immigrants and immigrant cultures and people bringing things from the old world to the new world. And mostly uh, immigrants from Eastern Europe we're bringing a grain that they knew was healthy and hardy and would grow in, in poor soil conditions. And most of those uh, immigrants ended up in the northeastern part of the United States. And a lot of those um, immigrants started uh, growing rye as a grain for uh, making food. But when you have a surplus, you can now make some whiskey. Well, as you say, rye was the original American whiskey. Mm, that's why he's singing about it in American Pie. I mean, up in, I mean, bourbon didn't come by popular until after Prohibition ended. Yeah. I mean, and we didn't really even establish what bourbon was until, what, was 1964 when they passed the legislation? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. So, rye was the most popular whiskey in America up until Prohibition. Cool. I like it. I love rye. I don't know what it is I like about it. Because, you know, I started by, I had bullet rye. It was the first rye I ever had. And I was like, well, I like it better than the other bullet. And then I had well, a couple other. So you're talking about the flavors that specific tea leaves give you, yeah, and mm -hmm. things like that. Well, yeah. grains do the same thing. 
And rye traditionally provides a spice, like almost a pepper spice. Yeah. And so if you like that, if you like a little spice in your whiskey, ryes are a great avenue to go. Now this, that rum finish mutes mm -hmm. some of the spice, mm -hmm. but there was enough spice in there that it can still hold up. So you're getting, you're getting a little spice, but you're getting a little bit of the sweetness on those fruit notes from the rum. Yeah. Makes it just incredibly yeah. easy to drink, what even kind, at 120 proof. What kind of still are they using at uh, Shire? Because this is a little oily as well. It's a pot still. Ah, there you go. Yeah, they're on pot, pot still. Yeah, it's really nice. The, the, the thing that I like about rye, here's why I chose this Shung, this type of tea is my favorite kind of tea. Ancient tree Shung Poor is like, that's all day long. I can drink that all the time. And I feel the same way about this tea that I feel about rye whiskey mm -hmm. in the sense that there's something, there's something like well, it's good dry about it. There's something <laughs> like woody about it. There's something green about it. Yes. There's something, and not Her like green and wood, just the color green, like the, this cool kind of mm -hmm. green feeling. It's like, feels very like masculine and very like calm. There's an herbal medicinal quality yeah. to it as well. Yeah, it's a little less on the sweet say, side and more on that like I get bitter. like an herbal, sweet, minty kind mm -hmm. of note yeah. with a lot of rye as well. Yeah. And it's funny, you brought up the color green. If you've ever looked on a liquor store shelf, 98% of all rye bottles, the labels are green. Uh-huh. Yeah. To the point when they were doing uh, the uh, and whiskey. And we did not buck that trend for some reason. Yeah, the whiskey, the whiskey it's got marketing. Got a green vibe. <laughs> the whiskey marketing school, when they were actually starting off, they were labeling their glasses with uh, red, green, and yellow. And people were n noting that it had a green label on. And they said, well, is this a rye? Because the green label yep. associated in their mind. So they started labeling them one, two, and three to get that wow. association out of your mind. Wow. Yeah. It's so strong. I wonder what it is. I wonder if it's just because some famous rye brand started it and everyone else followed. Yeah. It could possibly have. I don't know that we've ever talked about the origins of why rye started with a green label, but it just seems to be what everybody does. It's mm -hmm. got the vibe. You know yeah, what? Look, and I, look, I'm, it's all good. At least yeah. you know. You, like, you see it. You recognize it. Absolutely. It's, yeah. You're not second-guessing it. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Try it with the tea. So, so chase it with say, the chase it with the tea, okay. and and say it's really nice tea. Give it a thank you very much. Def and so yeah, take a sip and then give the tea a sniff, and you mm. get this honey note that you weren't getting before. Mm -hmm. After okay. the whiskey, then you taste the tea and you get this honey note and this yeah, herbal do. note, and it's that 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 herbal medicinal rye. Yeah, right. it's really really lovely. Oh, it's, those do pair very nice yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. Now because. He mentioned rye and shire. This is actually a blend of bourbons and shire distilling was part of uh, the yeah. blending of this. And it was their Percheron uh, release, which is a, uh, they've actually put an oak stave, a French oak stave in the barrel as it was maturing. Sneaky. And that's a portion of this. Also, um, we have Yellow Rose Distilling from Houston, Texas is in here, as well as from Dripping Springs. We have the Dripping Springs Distillery in here as well. Wow. So it's all Texas? Yeah. So that is the a Texas Whiskey Festival blend. So back in 2019, well, 2018, I had the idea. We finally released the first one in 2019. This cast strength, too? Uh, yes, right, it should be 116 proof, I believe. <laughs> just, just, just uh, give me a little bit. So the idea with this that, is, this is not a little bit. This is yours. Is you that mine? Uh, so I'm, I'm not trying to waste. I have to Thank drive. You. So back in 2018, yeah, well. <laughs> whenever I first met hang out outside <laughs> Daniel <laughs> Whittington. Uh, so back in 2018, when I first met Daniel Whittington, and I'd taken a trip to what is now Crowded Barrel, and I told him I was like, I want to release a blend of Texas whiskeys. And his response is, well, if you can get them to agree, we'll release it through the distillery. And I, was like, I was like, well, I mean, this is April of 2018. I just had the first festival. I don't know anything about this industry other than I like whiskey and I knew how to do an event. And I was like, well, how hard could this be? This won't be a... It was finally by August whenever I finally got three people to say yes. Thank you, Jared, for saying yes first. Robert yeah. Lickers for second and Ty for third. But in 2019, we released the first ever blend of Texas whiskeys wow. that was released by an independent person that was that they we bought the barrels we sold like blended it and sold it as an independent release first time in the history of Texas whiskey that was in 2019 we've been doing one every year since and that was the fourth one uh, and we haven't repeated a distillery yet 
and it's always three distilleries. You haven't repeated a distillery yet. Not yet. Cool. <laughs> cool. I like that. Yeah. I like yeah that. So this has been a really cool collaboration. You're going to find um, some Texas similarities because aging whiskey in Texas brings out a lot more darker right. notes uh, uh, yeah. Uh, because yeah, yeah, of yeah. because of our climate and so, uh, there is a chocolate black tea. Yeah, note I definitely that, yeah. get that. I definitely get the chocolate on this one. I get chocolate. I get honey. I get. So I can tell you where, so the honey is coming from the Percheron and the French oak stave finish thing. The chocolate's coming from the 1876, yeah. which is 80% corn and 20% rye. Uh -huh. um, and then, yeah, and then some of those other notes. So Yellow Rose, is, we use their outlaw bourbon, which is 100% corn. So a lot of the sweet sweetness. Yeah, yeah. So you, they all have a lot of corn that in there, but there's 100% huh? of corn in there. And the amazing thing is, is all of these came together to create this blend. So each one of the mm -hmm. distilleries created their mm -hmm. own blend. And well, then- we broke off into teams. Yep. That's so sweet. It's mm -hmm. so yeah. sweet. That's nice. Especially compared to the rye, it's like one after another, mm -hmm. because the rye has that like bitterness and mm -hmm. that edge that mm -hmm. I really love. But the contrast with this very like, yeah, chocolate, maple, honey, and just that sweet wood, you know, it's wood and it's sweet. Mm, it's really nice. They're both really, really nice. I really, you know, uh, the the uh, the Compass Box episode really helped me appreciate blended whiskeys as a subject. Mm -hmm. Not that I did before. I just yeah. didn't have the fine-grained so, understanding of them. Blended whiskey gets a bad rap. Right. And I'm a firm believer everybody should be blending whiskey at home. Um whether you do it scientifically like I do with the little cylinders or you just like get a glass and go a little bit of this, a little bit of that, play around with it and, uh, and see what you can create. You never know what you might just find something that's absolutely enjoyable. And there's a, and once you get into it, there is a, there's a skill, there's an art and it just becomes a lot of fun. I, 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 I'm really starting to appreciate it because I think before when we had blended whiskey, it was always something like we're trying to, mass produce something you know we're we're blending this because we're trying to mass produce something that is the same year to year and that we can you know maximize our profit in some way appeal and, to a mass market right appeal to a mass market and this that's that when we think blended whiskeys but now it's almost like this next generation of distilling blending situation because like as you know we've discussed you're always blending you're blending the different barrels you mm -hmm. know together so someone has to have that skill a blending stuff. It only makes sense that they, that skill would translate to blending different whiskeys from different distillers together, mm -hmm. and that when you see the like the virtuosic expression of that skill in whiskeys like this and the ones that we had last time, where it's not just some anonymous thing. Every single one of the things that's going into this is like proudly displayed and being. You're, yeah. you're talking, you know what's causing what, and you have like the, the names and addresses of these whiskeys, you know, that go into it. Yeah. And it's not just some stuff, it's these artisan Texas, you know, single region whiskeys. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, it's really cool. I really deeply appreciate it. This is a different tea. This is a different tea. This is a white tea, mm -hmm. honestly. I will try to get one going. Well, what's, 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 what's coming up next? Okay. Well, thank you, Jake. Uh, we're going to have another tea coming up, and we appreciate you following us here at West China Tea with Whiskey Provisioner, talking about tea and whiskey, and uh, we'll start start up another episode. <laughs> Do you have anything Bye. else? Yeah. <laughs> you have anything See you else soon. you want to say? No, that's it. That's you said it. it. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Right. Where can we find him? Jake, uh, you can find everything at txwhiskeyfest.com uh, or txwhiskeyfest on Instagram, Facebook, and I think all of the socials are the same handle. So you should be good to go there. What time and date for the festival? April 20th, starts at 4.30, Star Hill Ranch. And again, tickets are on sale at txwhiskeyfest.com. Do I need to do it too? What do you want to do? I mean, do a thing. I'll do it. Do it. I'll do, do it. it. Just yeah, do it. Uh, uh, yeah, we're here yeah. at West China Tea uh, in Austin, Texas. Come visit us at 4706 North I-35. We're also online at westchinatea.com and on Instagram at West China Tea and TikTok at West China Tea. It's my life these days. YouTube, apparently, right here, uh, Whiskey Provisioner, and, uh, and also Tea House Ghost. 
Uh, thank you, Richard. Thank you, Jake, for being here. Looking forward to still being here with you. <laughs> Sounds good. Looking forward to it. And if you want to be a guest and you want to join us here, or if you know somebody that uh, you think has uh, some interesting conversations, you can join us at whiskeyprovisioner.com and whiskeyprovisioner at gmail.com. <laughs>